Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mysteries and Oddities of the Week video. I thought I would mix one of these in while I'm continuing with your Cryptids and Monsters suggestions. This is because the last time I talked about an original video here for the Mysteries and Oddities series, it's over a year ago, if you can believe it. Now I've done a couple of them focusing on the Megan Fox show, but otherwise I've pretty much disregarded this series for a good while. So I thought to myself this would be a good time to focus on another in Entry here, and then I may focus on the series again once I finish my Cryptids and Monsters. So in this case, I found this entry on a website uh, called Listverse, and it shows some of the top 10 most mysterious things around the world. This one, though, definitely stood out. I can't believe it hasn't been a suggestion yet, or if it has... I'm sorry if I haven't picked it earlier, but it's a mysterious island that all has to do with one single thing that was found there that to this day remains absolutely a mystery as to how it went there. And then on top of that, it ended up actually disappearing thereafter. So lots of intrigue, lots of mystery associated with this. It's known as the Abandoned Lifeboat on Buffet Island. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating and mysterious info associated with this artifact, whatever it was that was found there. Now, Bovet Island is a very, very tiny island located literally in the middle of nowhere. You know, if you heard that phrase, out there in the middle of nowhere, this is it to the extreme. In fact, you're looking at a location of it here. So this is an island, if you could even call it that, more on that in a minute, uh, that's located somewhere in the middle between Africa and then Antarctica, although it's probably closer to Antarctica. And it's tiny, 49 kilometers in total size. So you could literally cover the entire island. If you happen to have a car driving 60 or so miles an hour, you could cover it within an hour or so. And then uh, this island has nothing surrounding it. No other islands, no other close landmass, absolutely nothing. No civilization is close to it unless you you count Antarctica and even then of course that has just a very tiny amount of people and people that are there are pretty much just there for research purposes if they're even there to this day so if you're ever stuck on this island you have no chance you have no hope the island itself is and the reason I mentioned if you could call it that it's basically a great a glacier because over 90% of it around 94% of it is covered by sheer ice 100% cold as hell ice. And this ice also encompasses a lot of the walls, in other words, the border, uh, the bordering of the island itself. So there's no way that you could just maybe, maybe just save yourself and try to swim, if you tried to be that crazy, try to swim away from the island to escape it, because you would be facing very, very large falls in this case because there's no uh, way to just get on the island naturally. The closest way you could get on the island is by helicopter. And in fact, that's how a lot of expeditions have happened to this island. And that's because of, again, the location, the extreme rigid circumstances of it. By the way, the average temperature there on the high end for the year is about 3 degrees Celsius. That's the high. The low is about negative 5 degrees Celsius. So you see it doesn't range that much, but still very, very cold. And then the waters surrounding it are also very cold. In fact, they're considered some of the coldest waters within all of Earth itself. So I mention all of this because Bovade Island should be naturally something that people do not go to. It's an island that should not be visited unless it's just pretty much for research purposes. Uh, ideally, though, and ironically, because of its very isolated stance, it's been long coveted as having a perfect location for weather stations. So there have been built uh, some built there, in fact, but um, in, in, in the earlier, let's say, uh, I'm sorry, in the mid-1900s, when the earliest notions of creating these weather stations was just coming about, there were expeditions to try to find out where we can do the land, where it would be the best place to do so. Um, also, this is because, interestingly enough, this island also has a volcano. Now, I'm reading several places. One of them said it's an active volcano. You know, the other one said it's inactive. It could be both because apparently there was a lava flow 
that happened from that volcano back in the 1950s. And when this occurred, it, it created a, a new way uh, for an expedition to come out and investigate it and then try to determine what is the best piece of land to set a weather station. Cut to, in this case, the mystery, and the, uh, or in this case, the mysterious item that was found. So in 1964, about 10 years after that, uh, that new area of land was created by that lava flow, whether it's from an active or inactive volcano to this day, uh, at that point, there was a commander, a lieutenant commander by the name of Alan Crawford, who was assigned to investigate that island. And like I mentioned a minute earlier, the only way to do so is by helicopter. So him and a crew went to this island. You've seen some of the pictures now. I mean, this is like straight almost out of Jurassic Park type thing, the way it's so isolated. You go to this location, and in this case, the lieutenant commander landed down. They started to do a trek throughout some other areas, trying to find um, what could be suitable in terms of them staying, and then what could be suitable in terms of, in this case, the um, weather station. And they came across a lagoon. And this lagoon was there um, it, because it could be because it's formed either from the glaciers that, that, that are created and then recede from the island. So again, it's not 100% in this case covered with ice. It's about 94% again. But still, some of it is covered and then some of it gets uncovered. It just depends on the weather and then how extreme it is there. But lo and behold, they found something very, very strange. In this case, a lifeboat, a regular lifeboat, an abandoned lifeboat. You know, the kind that you always see in the movies. Probably the first thing that you would think of, like in this case, um, when it comes to a Titanic type lifeboat, that's what you see there. This was a regular wooden lifeboat. It had no motor. It had no sails. It was just your average lifeboat that you would think would be involved with a very small body of water like let's say you're going out to uh, fish somewhere in some lake in the uh, nearby a city that of course has civilization nearby and it's perfect weather that kind of stuff but here in the middle of nowhere in this arctic hell you had this lifeboat and it was there it was right there in front of them and uh, they looked everywhere of course to try to find what the hell was going on and considering especially again the harsh nature of it that was the last thing they would expect unfortunately there was nothing there was absolutely nothing indicating how the lifeboat got there who was there and then what occurred to whoever came with that lifeboat. Um, they looked around the other locations. There was no, the, no like I mentioned, no motor, no sails, nothing indicated how in the world, you know, it got there in the first place. The closest thing they found, they did found some oars, you know, those giant wooden paddles that are used to uh, to, to, to move about when, in this, in this case, of, uh, when, you ha when you're when you thinking of a lifeboat out in the sea, they found it there, and then they also found a flattened copper tank and then one single barrel. And that's it. There was nothing else. They searched the entire landscape, no evidence of anything in terms of who was there, what happened to them, how they got there, not footsteps, no clothing, not even in this case, um, like even if it's an unfortunate stance, nothing involving like a corpse, like a frozen corpse or even a bloody mutilated corpse from any other land animals that are there. Nothing, absolutely no indication that there was nothing at all. So this lieutenant commander, of course, uh, reported everything and then he was able to then uh, come up with, I guess, as many best guesses as he could on his return trip but they didn't take anything with them i remember they were going by helicopter helicopter only has a certain size when it comes to um, what can be inside it so it's not like they could take this big lifeboat with them so they had to leave it there as is they abandoned it basically and then two years later there was another expedition yet again another survey that came around to that same area i imagine this was more purposeful because they wanted to also uh, no doubt do a follow-up um, with regards to this mysterious lifeboat, this abandoned lifeboat there on Bouvet Island. And when they went there, lo and behold, it was gone. There was no lifeboat. There was nothing there anymore. No copper tank, no barrel, no oars, nothing. The lifeboat was completely gone, almost as if it was never there in the first place. They tried to look to see, was you know, did someone drag this somewhere? Was it perhaps moved to another location? Did the ice maybe move it somewhere else? You know how ice definitely does move based on its weight. 
and not only the way it melts and then it builds and so they tried to see if there was anything else any possibility maybe even sank into the lagoon type area there or even went across the island let's say to the edge and fell off nothing uh, there's nothing indicating what occurred to that lifeboat whatever this mysterious abandoned lifeboat was there on Bavade Island it was there two years ago whenever the original expedition found it and now it was 100% gone and then to this day there's never been an explanation as to what occurred no one has come forward stating this was my lifeboat or this was the lifeboat of the crew that I sent over to some location and then they were lost and we never found them. There were no markings on the lifeboat as well that were discernible, like indicating uh, this is from a specific ship or some other type of, of circumstance. Uh, no indications on that end. So very mysterious, don't you, wouldn't you say, when it comes to how in the world this thing was there to this very day. So in terms of, again, no one claiming uh, that it's them, who knows? Um, no one has mentioned it. There, there have been multiple expeditions thereafter, too. Again, all done by helicopter. But the idea, uh, the most common notion is, what if there was a ship that somehow got lost, somehow got wrecked, ended up on this island? Um, no one has come forward, though, stating that that was them. If so, then they have remained as lost in time as, in this case, the lifeboat as well. So quite fascinating, though, when you realize all this information. It makes me scratch my head as much as I can wondering what happened here what was this life oh and if you're wondering well maybe it was there for a much longer time somewhere along the way um, the idea of the what I was mentioning earlier the volcano creating new landmass and then the lagoon apparently all this stuff didn't exist beforehand and so it was created afterward by the shifting land or whatever it was in terms of the uh, creation of this new land so somewhere along the way between the 10 years of the volcano creating that new landmass and then the first expedition with that lieutenant commander somewhere along the way a lifeboat turned up there it's the only way it could have it wouldn't have been there beforehand because apparently nothing would have existed that would have allowed it to be there in the first place. So somewhere along the way in that specific time between 1950s and 1960s, uh, somebody became lost. Somebody somehow ended up landing on that island without the benefit of a helicopter. And they did so in very harsh conditions, obviously, not just in the waters when it comes to being freezing cold, but the extreme temperatures that I was mentioning earlier. And they were able to do so by scaling all these cliffs, all these giant cliffs of ice somehow, that they got there but that was it and then they ended up in that lagoon and then whatever happened to that poor person or people they were gone so very very fascinating very mysterious hopefully we'll have some answers someday but who knows it may just remain lost in time forever by the way one little uh nice little tidbit of trivia when it comes to Bavay Island it's actually been featured in a franchise that you've probably seen the movie of especially if you're a big sci-fi fan I've seen it there's a good chance you've seen it too Aliens vs Predator remember that original movie uh from the uh mid 2000s or so um whenever it starts off and it pretty much ends up in the whole uh most of the movie when it comes to like a giant Island, glaciers, stuff like that. Uh, the, par part of it is uh, was was supposed to be there in Bavay Island. I think from the very beginning, when it comes uh, when that first predator hunted down that fisherman or whaleman or whoever that was, that's the, supposed to represent Bavay Island itself. So nice little bit of trivia in case if you wanted to hear that information. But if anybody has anything else, anything else might have missed with regards to this abandoned lifeboat, any more information uh, that stands out, please post those comments below. All right, everybody. Thanks again, as always. Take care. Bye.